PVZ Replanted was an actual joke. You're telling me that I had to pay $20 to play this garbage? And don't get me wrong, I love PVZ so much and all the spin-offs that came with it, but PopCap and EA, I'm disappointed. Anyways, after I was playing PVZ last week, I knew that I had to make a video about making Plants vs. Zombies in Roblox. There's no reason not to make this video right now as the game is regaining popularity and it's just a banger game. Before we begin making the game, please just consider subscribing as these videos take so, so long to make and you know, it, it helps, it helps a lot. Make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I do end up creating some really sick plants that are not in the base game. So, all right, all right, the intro's over. Enjoy the video, guys. To start off, we're going to need a base plate. We're gonna choose the default one. And I'm also going to make the tile texture eight by eight instead of four by four. And we don't really need a spawn point, but I'm just gonna leave it here just in case. And I'm also going to make it invisible. And then we have a little rig here for size comparison as well. The next thing we gotta do is make the base plate green. Please don't come after me, but I am using studs just because it looks nice, you know, just just give it a chance. And now it's time for ChatGPT to come in and create us our first script, which is going to be the camera view script. Here's the part where the camera will go into. We're just going to move it up a little higher and angle it down so we can actually test it. And so now all we got to do is tell AI to make it so that our camera locks onto the camera part in workspace. This should be really easy for ChatGPT to do. I have no doubts that this is not going to work. Uh... Okay, there, I actually got it to work. There was just something wrong with the rotation of the part or something. So for those of you who didn't know, the PVZ lawn in the game is five by nine squares. So we have to make the base plate a lot smaller. Bam and bam. There we go, five by nine. This is already better than the remastered game. I then spent some time making the game look a little nicer. I added a sidewalk and also a road as well as some dirt paths around the lawn. Here's what it looks like altogether, and I think it just adds a nice touch. And for those of you wondering, this is what it looks like inside the game. I know I'm missing the house on the left, but we're gonna add that later. I then told AI, to set us up a button that allows us to start the game and once you do start the game zombies start to spawn and then it gave us instructions how to install this into the game so i'm gonna go do that so here's our folder we're just gonna call this zombie spawner and then i'm assuming in here will just be a part like that and then we just gotta put each spawner at the end of each row and then lastly it just wants us to make a folder called zombies and i'm gonna throw a rig inside of that folder oh and i also created this button that'll start the game when we click it and for this to work ai wants us to put a local script inside of that button and then in this local script script is just the script that AI gave us and everything should work after we press this button okay yeah that seemed like it worked pretty well but obviously there's no code inside of these zombies yet so they just pile up on top of each other we should probably fix that right so we asked ChatGPT to make us some code for the zombies and all I wanted to do is make them walk left we can add the rest later we also hooked up the zombie script with the game over part at the left side of the lawn so when zombies get all the way to the end it's game over and if you're still confused it'll make sense in just a second let's set up the zombie script by giving it a name and then I'm assuming it wants us to paste it in here and then let's just create the part that triggers the game over when zombies touch it. And I think that should make sense. Oh, it, it actually worked. What the heck? And when they touch the trigger, oh, it works. Let's go. Now I want to make a plant picker. If this code works, we'll be able to pick out our seeds in the start menu. In the meantime, I created the GUI for the plant picker, and this is what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Test number one. So we have the GUI. It looks really good so far. We even have the button. When we click on it, it's selected. Perfect. And now when we click on an empty space, it should. Yep, there we go. It works. Obviously, we can just place it anywhere right now, and no zombies are spawning and stuff like that. So there are some bugs, but we're going to get through this. Okay, I told AI to make a couple changes and hopefully it works. So now when we play and we choose our seed and we press the play button, it goes in our toolbar. And now as you can see, when I click, plants snap to the grid unlike before where you could just place them anywhere. But you may have noticed that zombies are not eating the plants. So let's ask AI to add this now. It took a little bit going back and forth with AI, but as you can see, when the zombie is in front of the plant, it tries to eat it. And now we're going to add a GUI where you can select your plants to place them down. And obviously using tools work, but if we wanna make it look smoother and cleaner, I think we should go with the GUI panel instead. In studio, I created a little panel on the top left where our sun and seeds will stay in. While ChatGPT generates the code for the seed bar, I wanna make a model for the pea shooter. <coughs> I promise normally I'm not this bad, okay? Do you wanna see my nuts, bro? <laughs> Let's just name him Walnut. This is just the most cursed thing ever. Like, what, what even is happening right now? At least, at least we know it's working, right? Unfortunately, I made it so that you can't place plants on top of each other. As much fun as it was, this just looks a lot better. You may have noticed that pea shooters aren't even shooting. So let's go to ChatGPT and have it code that for us. And now it should work. So when we place down pea shooters, as you can see, they're actually firing at the zombies. I also added a ragdoll script to the zombies. So when they die, they just fall into the ground, but they don't despawn. So we have to go into ChatGPT to fix this. This fix also gives them a walk animation and this just makes it look a lot better than this 
and if you're curious this is what it looks like now it looks a lot more clean and wow it's fire and you may have noticed that we can just spam plants on the lawn so let's add a cost and cooldown system first thing i created was the sun and the way i did this was just using a ball with the neon material and then i gave it this little shiny particle and then i asked ChatGPT to set me up the sun stat so it wants us to create a script called sun service which we have right here and then it wants us to paste it right into the script that we just created the ai also wanted us to create a label on the top left so that we could track how much sun we have and as you can see on the top left it works it says we have zero sun and that's true because there is actually no way to get sun yet so let's make the sunflower plant still trash but not as bad as the walnut <laughs> What is this, bro? All right, now we're just gonna paste it into the plants folder. And then we're also just going to insert a script. Make me a script for my sunflower. And boom, as you can see, my sunflower actually produces sun now. And when I click the suns, they actually go into my sun bank. But there's no reason for having sun if your plants don't cost anything. So let's ask AI to add a cost value per plant. And I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but I just asked AI to rework the placement system so that it checks for the plant cost. And the cost for the plant can be edited within the attributes tab. So yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's not. And as you can see, when we go to pick our plants, it actually shows us how much sun it costs. So when we place down plants, it subtracts our sun count. It's time to add one of my favorite plants in the entire game, and that of course is Snow Pea. And here's his model. <laughs> And, and it's okay because he's still not as bad as walnut and to be honest snow pea was probably one of the easiest plants to add because it's just pea shooter with one minor change and that one minor change being the ability to slow zombies down oh and by the way it worked and then i added potato mine literally everyone's favorite and then some more chat gpt stuff which you guys do not care about at all oh my gosh it's perfect bro i then added repeater which is just a reskin of the pea shooter and here's the code that ChatGPT gave to us. And just like that, he shows up in game and shoots two peas at once. And this is what a lawn full of repeaters look like. I know you guys are sick and tired of my modeling skills, but I added Cherry Bomb and he works just the same as the real game. I spent around 30 minutes just polishing the game up. I added a cooldown to plants. And then lastly, I added a little preview that shows on your cursor before placing a plant. And then it actually came to my attention that the zombies don't even have a skin yet. So let's add that. I gave all basic zombies a brown coat and jeans. I also added added a buckethead zombie and the all-star zombie from pvz1 after that i created some of my own plants and i also threw in some plants from pvz1 gatling p was first and yeah he looked sick all we had to do now was just rewire some of the repeater code and paste that into the gatling p script and as you can see once we plant him down he shoots four peas at once and i know in the original game he's an upgrade to repeater but i was too lazy to add that and then i wondered what it would look like if i just put gatling peas across the whole lawn and yeah it was chaotic then i wanted to throw some fire into to the mix so i created a magma p and then i reworked p shooters code once again to make it deal fire damage i'll admit it this is probably one of my favorite plants that i've added so far but stay tuned because we add an even cooler plant later on the next plant that i added was lightning reed from pvz2 and if you're unfamiliar with this plant he basically shoots lightning that chains across different zombies all i had to do was ask ai to make me a script for lightning reed and i also asked it to include some visuals as well in no time it created us the script and it actually looks really nice so when we place the plant down onto the lawn it attacks zombies and lightning chains off them now for my last plant i wanted to go big and i wanted it to be my own so i started building the design for bamboo and holy he looks like an absolute unit and yeah he definitely is just look at this <laughs> And now it's time to actually play this because I haven't really properly tested everything out. I'm gonna go for Bamboom, Gatling P, Lightning Reed, Magma P, and mm, Sunflower. So obviously we need a line of sunflowers in the back. And we already got our first zombie. Okay, this is bad. Okay, I'm gonna put a Lightning Reed in the middle and that should go for both. Perfect. We gotta keep adding sunflowers in the back as well. And this Lightning Reed should take care of all these zombies in the middle here. I'm gonna put a Gatling P on the outside here and a Magma P on the bottom here as well. And hopefully these two peas on the top and bottom should stop any zombies on the top or the bottom row i'm gonna continue adding sunflowers on the back like so and then i'm also gonna add another lightning reed here so far it's pretty easy and then i'm gonna finish off our sunflower armory by adding our last one collect all these sun dang so far so good i'm gonna add another lightning reed here and now it's time to add bamboo right in the middle here kind of dumb to put him in the front but i want my lightning reeds in the back where they can be safe and then speaking of lightning reed we're gonna add another one here and we're gonna add another gatling p right up here and then another lightning reed at the top as well so our line of lightning reeds are complete and we don't need to add any more i'm gonna add another bamboo right here to help out with this big crowd of zombies down here and then i'm also gonna add another gatling p behind him i didn't really spend a lot of time balancing things so i, I feel like some plants are kind of over 
overpowered right now, but it all might balance out as soon as All Star Zombie comes out. All right, and a bunch of zombies are starting to flow in now, so it's starting to get really stressful. But we should be good because we have three Mr. Bambooms here, and actually, make that four. Now we have four Bambooms here. All right, well, All Stars are nowhere to be found right now, so I'm just gonna spawn them in myself. And never mind, there's an All Star Zombie right there. As soon as I was about to spawn it in, it just spawned in itself. Yep, and they're starting to come. Yeah, we're cooked. Oh my gosh, we're actually fried here. All these All Star Zombies on the top are, are gonna kill us. No! Oh, nope, yeah, we're dead. Yeah, the All Star Zombie is about to eat our sunflower, and. You know, I should have added waves because then we could actually know what wave we were on. But if I was to guess, well, that was probably like wave 10. I don't know. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one since this one's a little longer than my usual videos. Leave a comment and suggest what game I should make next with AI. And thank you again to all my channel members. And if you didn't know, all my channel members get access to the game files in my videos. Oh, and not only that, it really helps me out a ton too. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.